I'm John Arthur Eves, attorney and advocate for public safety, and I'm joined here today uh, uh, with John Mosley, the owner of Clinton Body Shop, my family's personal uh, body shop here in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, John, uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you for having me. John, uh, you know, you've been repairing our car for a long time. Why is it so important uh, that we repair a car uh, properly? Well, there's several reasons, and the first thing, of course, is because of safety. Cars are designed and built down to be safer than they ever have been before. They're also lighter than they've ever been before. So if you don't adhere to all the standards that the manufacturers put in place, you are absolutely not restoring the safety of that vehicle. The other thing is the investment in the vehicle. If the car is not repaired properly, whoever owns that car is going to lose money when they go to trade it in or they go to sell it. So you have, you have a double-edged sword there you're working with. And of course, you're having to constantly fight with an insurance company who just wants a cheap, fast repair. Uh, they say they want safety, but over and over again, uh, the largest insurance companies in the world put up the biggest fight uh, at, at our own shop. Uh, they don't want to. They don't want to adhere to these OEM recommended repair procedures. John, let me interrupt you, man. What does OEM stand for for uh, those of us, that right. people? OEM, that's a good question. OEM is original equipment manufacturer. So if you drive a Mercedes, then it would be parts and procedures specified by Mercedes. If you drive a Hyundai, parts and uh, procedures specified by Hyundai, General Motors, Ford, whoever's the maker of your vehicle. So are you telling me that the insurance companies uh, try to keep you from putting on original parts on the car? I'm telling you that the biggest insurance companies in this country will hand will lay an estimate on my desk that is full of aftermarket, just cheap Chinese knockoff parts that you wouldn't even think should be legal uh, to be trying to uh, recreate these and and, uh, and and shouldn't be legal to tell you to put them on somebody's car when they can show you no safety uh, testing or anything to assure that these parts are equivalent to the maker of the vehicle, to the parts made by the maker of your vehicle. And is this going on just here in, in Jackson, Mississippi, or is this? No, this, this is a problem nationwide. This goes on all over the country. Uh, insurance companies are focused on maximizing profits. Uh, they say they do it for the uh, consumer, that, that it helps them keep policies down. But yet I don't think there's one documented time that they can show you, or not that I've ever seen, where they can uh, they can go back and attribute a uh, an aftermarket part to any kind of uh, cost savings over premium. Uh, now, um, you've been in business for, for how long? 40 years. 40 years. And uh, during that 40 years, um, uh, you know, has it been easy to stay in business uh, and, and really try to protect the consumer's interest? You know, the hardest thing about staying in the collision repair business is trying to make a profit and perform a correct repair when you have the insurance company who is the entity that's paying for that repair that's focused on the cheapest repair they can make. So yes, it's very hard to stay in business. Uh, there are shops who put their liability online every day so an insurance company saves money. Case in point, uh, a big, big case over in Dallas, Texas, if you've never heard of it, just do a Google search for Todd Tracy Honda Fit and look what happened to a young couple because an insurance company saved money on a labor procedure. And yet the shop owner, when he testified, he said he, he didn't adhere to procedures because his, the insurance company paying the bill didn't want him to go by the procedures. They wanted a faster, quicker repair, and he thought it would be a, a good repair, but yet a man almost lost his life, his wife almost lost her life. This guy was so severely burned, he stayed in a burn center for almost three years and has forever been damaged. He'll never be a, a normal human being again. I've had a lot of people ask me, they say, you know, Attorney Eves, are you, uh, can you take, can I take my car to any shop I want to? What, what is your understanding of a uh, customer's right to take their, their car to the shop they want to? All right, I'm in almost every state in the nation, and I spent a good bit of time studying this, there are, there are laws in effect that say you have the right to have your vehicle repaired wherever you want to take it. Here's where the problem comes in. They can say you can take it to the shop of your choice, but if that shop charges more, if they don't agree with our repair estimate, you may have to pay the difference. Uh, and that's where the problem comes in. Here in Mississippi, we have a law in the book that says 
the most an insurance company has to pay is the least amount they can have the repair properly and reasonably repaired for in a local geographical area of the insured, but properly and reasonably were never defined. Now, our attorney general worked with us, and, uh, and I, I served on a panel along with some more collision repair members and uh, industry members and some insurance industry members, and everybody testified before the attorney general. Uh, makers of these vehicles came in and sat on this panel, and they testified. The aftermarket parts industry came and sat in on this panel, and they testified. And the thing that really appalled me as the vehicle, as a repairer of your vehicle is that when our attorney general, Jim Hood, asked the the makers of these vehicles to explain and to show how they how they uh, tested these parts and their car and cars and everything to assure you were getting a good part and a repair process that would be equal to that of the OEM uh, original design. Uh, they had that information, they had the proof and they shared it. When he asked the aftermarket parts people for that same information, they didn't. They couldn't share anything. They couldn't give you any mm -hmm. examples. No, uh, you know, no crash test or anything. They just said we tested our parts and we know we know they're equal, but yet they wouldn't share any proof of that. No transparency. That's there. right. So let me ask you this: If my insurance company wants me to take my car to a shop other than your shop, and I want to go to your shop, can I do that? You absolutely can. You still have the right to bring your vehicle wherever you want to. Uh, in our case. Anything we do for you, we're going to we're going to put OEM parts on your car, and we're going to obey the OEM uh, repair procedures. We'll adhere to those. Now, if you have to pay money out of your pocket, I, as a professional, and this is just at our shop. I'm, I imagine there's a lot of shops around the country that do this, but I, as the professional, will go and sit in a court of law with that person who has to pay me money and explain why I made the repairs that we made, why we use those parts, and why we use the procedures that the insurance company may not have uh, paid for. And I have full confidence that a judge will will have that customer reimbursed. Well, I mean, we've seen it happen over and over again. And uh, you've heard of this 1963 uh, decree that was uh, an agreement between Robert Kennedy, uh, uh, the Attorney General at the time in 1963, and the entire insurance industry. Why is that so important to consumers? Because that 1963 consent decree, uh, I'll give it to you in a layman's language, but the 1963 consent decree forbids the insurance company from interfering in the repair process of the vehicle. They can't come in and tell you how you're going to repair it. They can't tell you where to buy your parts. They can't try to set a standard as far as rates or whatever. Uh, they have to be what they're designed, what they were originally designed to be, the person that pays the claim with two and a half decades. It's like insurance companies don't even know what you're talking about when you talk about the 1963 consent decree. Nobody has enforced the decree. And now all of a sudden, and honestly, I feel like the push now is spurred on because insurance companies are being called to task uh, through a multi-district litigation effort, as you know. So they don't want the 1963 consent decree on the books anymore because it, you know, it without it, their actions may be more justifiable, more be, be more defendable, but with that consent with that consent decree on the books, they have a problem because they've been doing exactly what the consent decree said they couldn't do. And that's the importance of it. Uh, now all of a sudden we hear that uh, William Barr, the US Attorney General, is considering abolishing the nineteen sixty three consent decree, which we think is outrageous. You know, they've gone for years and not enforced it. Now, all of a sudden, they want to take it completely off the books. So we're asking all the public to please join us and uh, write a letter to the U.S. Attorney General. Send it to judgmenttermination.com. I'm sorry, judgment term, judgment termination comments at usdoj.gov. And, uh, and tell him, you know, how important you think it is that that 1963 consent decree is enforced. You know, not abolished, but actually enforced the consent decree. People have a right to a safe and proper repair and to have the value of their vehicle preserved. I think it'll make a big difference, John. I think, I think it will, too. Thank you for talking to us. Yeah. And I'm sorry I got that address wrong, but it's judgment termination comments at usdoj.gov.